Good morning, it's Monday, August 9th, 2021, and I am Tony Walker. The Bible says in John chapter 6, verse 9, There is a lad here which hath five barley loaves and two small fishes, but what are they among so many? This morning on the way to my office, I was listening to a program called The World and Everything in It. The World and Everything in It. If you never heard of that, uh, the best way I can describe it to you is what I once read someone else describe it as one time, and they said it's like a Christian version of NPR radio. So if you like that kind of thing, talk radio and comments on news and culture and commentary and things like that, uh, from a Christian perspective, you would probably enjoy checking that out. Well, what made today's program different is that they're actually celebrating the 10-year anniversary of the world and everything in it radio program. And so they've brought in some past uh, some past hosts and talked about the history of the program and its beginnings and things like that. And a few moments ago, I, was, I started listening to it in my truck on the way to my office, and then I still had it playing a moment ago. And the lady just uh, talked about the beginnings of it and the using the uh, the recorder and uploading it on slow Wi-Fi and putting it on Dropbox and things like that and how as the program has grown the technology has grown but she made this comment about the the humble technology at the very beginning and she just mentioned this phrase that we we hear from God's word uh, quite often people commenting on it despise not the day of small things despise not the day of small things. So as they were listening this as I was listening to this podcast, they were talking about how it began in 2011 and they didn't know exactly how the the podcasting thing was going to do. And I just kind of chuckled to myself and I thought, yeah, I remember on a very much smaller scale, if theirs was humble, mine was probably meagerly humble. But I do re- I remember in uh, 2000, February 20th, 2004, when I began a, a small weekly 15-minute uh, radio program here in Anderson, South Carolina. And then I believe it was around the end of 2004, maybe the beginning of 2005 or so, there was a magazine called Mac User, if I remember it at the time, or maybe Mac Life. And they talked about this new thing back around 2004, 2005 called podcast. Now, at that time, there was no podcast app. There was no podcast. And before that, the iTunes store, um, as a matter of fact, to to get a podcast, you had to download something uh, separately or manually using these things called RSS and XML. And you had to take these MP3 files and put it in there. Well, it's, it's very hard to believe. I'm getting old, but I remember almost 20 years ago, coming up close on 20 years ago, two decades ago, when I had that little, little humble thing called the Bible broadcast, and then I turned that into the Bible podcast. And I just thought with the, the comment this lady made on the on the world and everything in it, how we we should not despise the day of small things. Another phrase that you've maybe heard before, sometimes used with this verse in John 6, 9, is from the little kid song, little is much when God is in it. Little is much when God is in it. What kind of got me thinking about that this morning is as I woke up this morning, a little bit earlier, quite a, quite a bit earlier than normal, I've got some things to help my wife with the, some doctor's appointment with the kids and all. So I need to go home later today. So I tried to get a, a, a head start this morning to make up for the being away this afternoon. Uh, so I got up this morning a little bit before three and got ready and was heading to my office. And, uh, you know, three o'clock, four o'clock in the morning, there's no one on the road. Everything is crystal clear, quiet no interruptions, and it it took me back mentally to almost 20 years ago when I worked third shift at a local plant. Now, at this place that I worked at, if you want to call it work, really the only reason I was there is to make sure the place didn't burn down to the ground. Uh, If you've ever heard of Ryobi, uh, TTI, um, Home Light Trimmers, Weed Eaters, well, Weed Eaters is actually a brand, but Home Light Trimmers and Chainsaws and things like that, I worked in the place where they tested those, and so the engineers would make these trimmers or saws or generators or whatever, and we would get them in the test lab, and I was not an engineer. I was a lowly junior technician working through a temp company at the beginning, and so my job is to the first shift people got the machines running, and they would do all their tests and things, and they would hook them up to the uh, the big gas tanks and bypass you know the little tank on the on the outdoor equipment. And so with the with these little weed eaters being hooked up to like 
five or ten gallons of gasoline at a time. Uh, somebody needed to be there to make sure, at least if the place exploded, they could say someone was there. Well, I got to be the lucky person who did that on third shift. And as long as everything ran smoothly, it was, you could say, a walk in the park. So back in those 2002, 2003, 2004, 2005, 2006, uh, there was no such thing as smartphones. There was no such thing as uh, iPads or anything like that. Uh, so all I had was a, a clunky old computer there uh, in the lab where I worked. Um, I had my Bible, had some books, had the machines I had to check at the top of every hour. And for the most part, other than that, I could uh, had a little bit of free reign, I guess you could say. And many nights, I remember going outside on the front porch there uh, in, a, we called it 28 Bypass, where it was a not an interstate highway, but a main road there in our county. And I, I would sit on that front porch, not a single person there in that half a million square foot building other than me. And I would just sit there and look at the stars, think about God, drink hot chocolate, pray about pray for people at church, um, just just enjoy the, the quietness and the alone time. And I remember there were times where I would get frustrated and I would think, man, I'm, why is this in life? Why is that in life? Why am I working third shift in a plant? But you know, here I am at 37 years old and I look back on when I was 18, 19, 20, 21 years old. I look back on those four years, which are coming up on two decades two decades ago, and I, I, I'm beginning to understand a lot of the lessons God taught me at that young age. And with life now, sometimes I, I think, man, what it would, what it, what would it be like to be able to go back to those days and instead of having a clunky computer with with no Bible software and a, a printed Bible, what if I could take my my M1 laptop loaded with Logos Bible software and high speed internet? What if I could go back 20 years ago, knowing what I know now with the technology we have now? But you know what? It's frivolous to ask those questions because we can't go back. And I've thought, you know, the way I feel nostalgically about those times a decade or two ago, and I was restless then, and now I'm looking back and thinking, man, Tony, you didn't realize how, how blessed you were. You know what? Sometimes we still get restless in life. And the day is going to come when I'm 57, and I'm going to look back at when I was 37 sitting here in this office at our church thinking, Man, Tony this, Tony that. Don't you you should have realized this. You should have realized that. And if time lasts, I'm gonna be fifty-seven. There's gonna be a little bit of tension, a little bit of pull, a little bit of restlessness, a little bit of God, what are you doing? And then twenty years after that, I'm gonna look back. So without going going on and on, because after fifty seven and seventy seven you get up to ninety seven, I doubt I'll still be here. But what I wanna leave you with is this. Whatever you have, whatever is the small thing in your life, whatever are the five loaves and the two fishes, in the Christian life, I want you to remember, as my friend, I believe it was my, my friend Matt Everhard, check out his YouTube channel if, you, if you've never done so. I believe it was me and Matt talking one time, and he said he used this phrase, um, a, a spiritual content restlessness. A, a spiritual restlessness, a content tension, being thankful with what you're doing, where you're at, what God's given you to do, but also not being so content that you get settled in and complacent. Always being a, a, a million percent thankful for what God's doing for you, but also wondering what God is teaching you in that situation for the future. Now, I, I'm aware, I realize that John chapter 6, the breaking of the, the bread, the five loaves, and the two fishes. Why is that in the Bible? Well, John actually tells us that towards the end of his book, he said that was written, the, the chapter 6 and everything else was written, that we might believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing we might have life through his name. So the, the purpose behind John chapter 6 is to show that Christ, th this person named Jesus who showed up, really is the Christ, really is the Son of God. And if he can break bread and fishes and multiply it to thousands, he can give me eternal life. That That's the, the main point of that, church, that chapter. But I, I don't think it's dishonoring Christ to comment on this, this lad who gave what little he had. And the focus there is not on how little what he had, but it's on what Christ did with how little that lad had. Now, I look back on when I was in my, my late teens and early 20s with you know, the, the, the 867 megahertz PowerBook G4 with a, a little um, 
this thing right here, th this microphone, that, that's that's what the Bible broadcast was done on 2004 to 2014. Look back and think on those humble beginnings and say, you know what? That's not where God intended me to end up because I'd still be there. But for a temporary time, that's what God had me do. That's where God had me at. That's what God would have me to be. And so if I could go back, would I change anything 10, 15, 20 years ago? Looking back, no, I wouldn't change anything, except I would have been more content knowing that the future would get here fast enough. So I'm going to tell that same lesson to Tony Walker here at 37 years old. Tony, be thankful where you are. Be thankful with what you have. Be thankful with what God has called you to do. Because the day is going to come 20 years from now, and you're going to look back, Tony, and realize God was teaching you great lessons for his glory, just like he did back between 2002 and 2006, working third shift there in that, that plant, working by yourself when all you had was a, a Bible, a little bag of food, and, and eight hours alone uh, to spend time thinking about eternity and spiritual things and, and matters like that. Now, I don't know who this message is for. Uh, if you want to call this just a lightning bolt of inspiration, humble inspiration, uh, I realize this, this this YouTube channel doesn't have a whole lot of subscribers and have a whole lot of outreach, but maybe there's a few people that you feel like I've <laughs> felt for my whole Christian life. Lord, I'm thankful for what, what I'm doing. I'm thankful for where I'm at. But Lord, what in the world are you doing with where I'm at? So if, if that feels like you, I want you to know that you're not alone. I want you to know that God is still using you, that God is faithful, and be faithful with what he's given you to do because the day is going to come where you're going to look back on it and realize, hey, God was there in the midst of that the entire time. So I thank you for your time. I hope that you'll check out some other things here on the YouTube channel. Um, if, if, if by chance I ever get the Bible broadcast ever started back up, or likely the, the, that radio station actually went out of business, uh, the Bible podcast, uh, I'll be sure to give you an alert there. But until, until then, until we have, get back to a weekly 15 minute uh, radio segment type deal. Uh, maybe these hit and miss type YouTube videos might be the norm for, for a little while. I'll just get the feedback on that. Uh, the latest project on the YouTube channel, which is taking a back seat once the summer stuff got here, being a youth pastor, my summers are very busy. Um, I'll try to get back on continuing the series on a biblical theology of technology. I believe I recorded the first uh, one or two parts of the paper that I wrote. Uh, me to reading that paper to you and commenting on it, uh, but I'll try to hopefully get back to picking that up. I believe I've probably got three or four more sections I'd like to share with you on uh, how God is behind the history of technology, uh, but there's some other things on the YouTube channel you might like. If you like knives, flashlights, Bible sermons, um, tactical uh, EDC bags from five, seven, ten years ago, uh, there's lots of old things on there, but I don't want to neglect the channel and as I had this thought this morning, uh, John chapter 6, despise not the day of small things, the 10-year anniversary of the podcast I listened to, the world and everything in it. Just wanted to share this simple thought with you, that whatever you're doing, wherever you're at, no matter how small it may be, no matter how small it may feel, I want you to know that if you're a believer in Christ, if you know him as your Savior, God is doing great things through you, even if you don't find out till you see his face in heaven. All right. Enjoy the rest of your day. Take care.